Welcome, friends. Welcome back to Sunday Morning and the Old Cookbook Show. Um, today we're going to do a recipe out of the Chicago Daily News Cookbook, published in 1930. And this is a very interesting cookbook because it is essentially a community cookbook. All of the recipes have been submitted by um, people who live in Chicago. And these are recipes that they would be very proud of. Proud enough to submit them and let the world see what they were eating. Now this was published in 1930, so the Great Depression was already on. And there's a whole section in the front of this book about balancing the budget. And they're very careful to point out that if you follow these recipes in this book, that you'll be able to create a really good diet for you and your family at about $4 per person per week. Or they're saying a family of five, $20 a week, all in. And with this, that would allow for eight pounds of meat a week for your family. You know, they're also looking at, you know, two and a half pounds of butter for your family for the week. Like, that's a lot of meat and butter. And they go on to talk about the economic conditions in Chicago. And so when I look through, you know, statistical resources and newspapers from this time period, this $4 per person per week um, is very feasible. Uh, based on sort of median wages or average wages. Some of the recipes in here are uh, not relevant to us at all in 2020 and what we're currently going through. Um, mostly because some of the way that food is distributed has changed and also some things that were thought of in the 1930s as um, poor people food definitely is not poor people food at this point. Um, nobody's looking for discount lobster or discount oysters or you know things like that have switched from being foods that were affordable to foods that are now considered luxuries. So we're going to do today something called meatballs and dumplings um, and it seems like a very interesting recipe in that I, I can't quite grasp where it came from. I mean it's sort of somewhere between a Salisbury steak and, and a bunch of other things. I think it should be very flavorful, so we're going to give it a go. Now we start out with ground beef, and for this I'm using um, this prepackaged chub of ground beef. It's something that you can buy two or three of. They're relatively inexpensive in comparison to the other ground beef in the, uh, in the meat case. And you can keep it in the freezer. It freezes really well. To that I'm going to add salt, some flour, and a minced onion. This also calls for some pepper and some milk. Now, in true depression style, we're going to make do today because um, we haven't been able to get to the grocery store, and so we're almost out of milk. But what I do have, strangely, is um, this container of whipping cream. And it is, uh, it's past its best before date. It hasn't spoiled, but it is past its best before date, and I need to use it up. So. Instead of using milk, I'm going to use what I've got, and that is a half a cup of cream. It'll change the flavor a little bit, but I mean, we are in sort of a make-do situation right now in April 2020. So in goes the milk. Now I mix this all together, and you make it into patties instead of meatballs. So the only way to do that is with your hands. Try to get them as equal as possible. Uh, it's kind of hard. The next instruction is to sear the patties quickly on both sides in a pan with some butter. So get the butter in there and get it melted. There we go. I'm surprised that butter is the fat um, that we're asked to use here. Just because when you're trying to brown these, the butter is starting to burn, which generally isn't something that you want to have happen. Now, into the pan goes another onion chopped, and I just saute this off. Now, the patties go back in. And we pour in some water. We 
put on the cover. So while the meat is cooking away there in the pot, I'm going to make the dumplings. This gets a drop dumpling. Um, you just drop it into the gravy a little bit later. And typically, these have always been filler. Uh, this is sort of that meal extender. You take less expensive ingredients and you can draw the meal out, make everybody feel full. So, so I've got flour, salt, and baking powder. And to that, it asks me to put in a little bit of butter and some milk. No milk. Um, so since what I have is the cream, I'm not going to put the butter in. I'm just going to use all cream. That'll give me enough fat. And I also know from other experience that um, biscuits made just with cream and, and no butter taste absolutely amazing anyway. So I'm going to mix this together into a nice dough. And I didn't pour all of the milk in at once. I just put it in a little bit at a time just so that I can get the dough to the right spot and it's not too sticky. Did I say milk? I meant cream. At this point, it asks me to put in a carrot and some celery. So we arrange those around. And at this point, it's pretty much cooked. So as soon as the vegetables are cooked through, we can move on. Now, one of the things you realize very early on with these cookbooks is the times for cooking vegetables and pasta are totally out of whack with what we would do today. Um, there's some recipes in here that tell you to boil spaghetti for 40 minutes um, before you put it into the sauce. Um, I don't know of anybody who boils spaghetti for 40 minutes. Can spaghetti even last in boiling water for 40 minutes? As soon as the vegetables are cooked, we'll pull the patties and the vegetables out, put them on a platter, and then we'll drop the dumplings in one by one and cook them. Ooh. Okay. Dumplings, dumplings up, up, up. <laughs> Not the meatballs I was expecting. No, it's it's called meatballs and then it tells you to make them into patties. So round flat. Well, it doesn't matter. Tastes the same. Okay, so I love um, dumplings. <clears throat> plate those up, Jules. All right. And uh, the dumplings and the gravy turned out really nicely. Dumplings always turn out nicely. Yeah. They are uh, kind of the flavor of whatever you've cooked them in. They're kind of bready and gooey, and I know that doesn't sound great, but I love them. We Kay. ate them. A little bit of gravy on top. There we go. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, it was something that always showed up in stew when I was a kid. Yeah. Um, oh, that fork or spoon. That flavor extender, the... the. Yeah, these are biscuits on the top. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Love it. I don't know okay. what to try first. A little bit of gravy on I'm top. I'm totally trying the dumpling first. I'm going to go with a spoon for some reason. It's hot. Yes, I saw it just come out of there. I probably should have done the other first. I can tell by your face I should wait. Mm -hmm. It's too hot. No, it's, <clears throat> um, it's, it is a very plain dumpling. It's, it's the gravy that gives it the flavor. Mm -hmm. Now, in the summertime, if you've got herbs in your garden, oh, yeah. you could chop up some chive or something and put it in there if you, if you, if you wanted to, but it doesn't need it. No. I don't think, I think the gravy is kind of nice. I like it, and it's got that... And it is a gooey thing. It's like, even though it's a dough, yeah, it is a gooey dough. It's, it it's kind of like eating a big ball of pasta. Yeah. <laughs> and the, I love it so. Oh, it's got that wonderful... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a childhood thing. I, to I totally admit that this is a childhood favorite, something that I absolutely love. And uh, I wonder if this is Mrs. Charles Lawrence's version of a... Salisbury steak. I mean, it's not too bad. It's Hamburg. Mm -hmm. I mean, not to, not mm -hmm. to you know, downplay what you've made here, Glenn, but it's, it's you know, I, I would like more flavor of some sort. I would put other spices in it. I'd probably put some hot peppers in it and it stuff is, like that. It is ground beef just with salt and pepper. Mm -hmm. I mean, so it, it, it has that. You, you taste, all you really taste is the beef. Yeah, but you could, again, you know what? You could make this any flavor you want. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, choices of, the choices are yours. No one mm -hmm. says you can't have dumplings in your curry, right? Yeah. You know, and flavor this with whatever, you know, flavor it with whatever, make, whatever brings you joy, Yes. whatever you've got in your kitchen, <laughs> those seem to be the two things we need to think about right now. Mm -hmm. um, so, even though it is plain, I'm really enjoying this. I could sit down and devour this. I could eat more than my fair share. Um, it really is about thinking smartly about your food budget at this point. 
And uh, availability. And availability. And yeah. sometimes. So, thanks for stopping by. Stay safe. Stay healthy. See you again soon.